Hi, Owen Seabrook, Goblin King. Today on Will It Mocap, we're gonna look at how motion capture can change the dance industry. So we've got a professional ballet teacher and a student, and we're gonna put them in this motion capture volume and see how their process is changed to give an access to a 360 degree point of view and all the powers of playback. But first, let's learn about motion capture. I'm Owen, and last year I got a grant to open a motion capture studio and research lab. There's only one problem. I don't know a thing about mocap. Let's learn it together as I ask the question, will it mocap? This is the Vicon Vero 2.2 megapixel optical motion capture camera. With its sleek, easily mountable design and 6-12mm varifocal lens, this baby is capable of capturing infrared data at a cool 330 frames per second. Take one of these puppies and affix it in a ray with more of the same. You've got yourself a three-dimensional volume of motion capture. Isn't that right, Phil? Yep. Now look at these. These are passive tracking markers. Those cameras love this reflective coating. They're always trying to spot it. And when they do spot it, that's when they begin to talk. You've got a marker there. Where is it? Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Oh, stop it. I've got it. It's a coordinate 3456. Right, there, yeah, marker, lad. Are you guys seeing this? Where, where is it? Oh, my God, I haven't seen a marker. Hey, uh, this is the greatest day of my camera life. Now this is a guy called Phil. You don't need one, he's just the one I've got. But see the stretchy suit? He's so marked up that those cameras aren't just gonna see dots, they're gonna see a bloke. <laughs> but I'm not trying to run a bloke in capture studio, I'm trying to run a motion capture studio. And that means that any motion, bloke or otherwise, is welcome for capture under our roof. And to get good at that, I'm gonna need the best movers there are. Perfect. The limitations that I personally find when I'm looking at a student is I can't see everything that's going on. It's as simple as that. And so what you do find yourself leaning towards are sort of general group corrections. Rather than understanding the individual needs, the specifics, the sequence of events that's caused that correction, because unfortunately we can't only see, you know, one specific place. So teaching is incredibly two-dimensional in a dance class. You know, you really do see it like you would see it on stage as a dance teacher. Now I can move angles, but when something's happened specifically, then some, that could completely change the next time they do it. And you can't just stop class and watch a dancer from like 15, 16 different angles. It's not possible. You don't have that level of time. So are you being as analytical and precise as you possibly can be? Without a doubt, no. So for the dance teacher, it's all about angles and catching things that they would miss just by looking at it with their own eyes. Whereas the student, they need to be able to build this mind-body connection where they can feel a muscle that they can't see and know that it's in the right place. So ideally with the motion capture, we'd be able to build this with a room that's this size and computing power that allows us to record and play back instantaneously. Maybe even utilizing some exciting new technology that's just been launched. But we don't have that. What we do have is a little room in the middle of Leeds with 10 cameras and a computer we built in 2021. Still, it's enough to test a the theory. The best dance lesson you ever had. Will it mocap? Before we get into that, how did we get... It was a day like any other. I was sneaking into my own office, just like normal, when I noticed something was wrong. But I don't remember filling out a lengthy application form for government grant funding. The box was full of strange objects like stretchy pants, svelte, and a light-up thing. Hmm, I thought to myself, confusedly. But then, <gasps> that's no gadget. It's a Vicon Vero 2.2 megapixel optical motion capture camera. But 
Why is it here? Just let me go in here for one second. You're going in the wrong room. I'm not. This is the right room. I know what room it is. No, no, you're really wrong about that. It's the wrong room. You're right, actually. It actually is the wrong room, actually. Dear Owen, aka the Goblin King, it is with great joy that I confirm that the government grant for which you filled a lengthy application form has been approved. I've forgotten I've done that. We think opening a motion capture test lab is a wonderful idea. Clever boy, I trust you have all the technical skills. Please find accompanying this message all the equipment you will need to get started. But be careful. It's fragile. Well, what are you waiting for? You're sincerely someone at the government. Yes. P.S. One of these days you're going to have to tell us how you can read letters without opening the envelope. So it was time to get to work. Howley was going to bring his student Tilly to the motion capture studio to capture some dancing. We're saying at this point that Harley has thought way more about all this than I have. His ambition for what this stuff could do for the dance industry is mind-blowing. Well, I can jump mm -hmm. here. The plan was Howley and Tilly would devise a short bit of choreography that would work within the confines of our volume and show off some of her technical skills. We would get two takes, one where Tilly was purposefully doing it a little bit rough and one where she gave it her best shot. Now, we were pretty sure that the rough take would give Howley a lot to work off as a dance teacher, but would Tilly's best dancing be able to escape the all-seeing eyes of the motion capture camera. We had to figure out exactly what they could do in the space while staying roughly in the sweet spot of the volume. This is our problem if we came to life, there would it be? It was all looking great, but how would it fare in the suit? Mostly okay. Mostly. But she remembers how it used to go wrong. And that's, I think that's quite important as well. So hopefully it don't look too manufactured, but actually in essence. Oh, we kept kicking off the truck in longers. <laughs> that was like, that was like ninja precision. Though. It's because she's, she's, a just, she's just so powerful now, you see. <laughs> it might have taken a little bit of cutting and sticking, a little bit of arts and crafts, but it was fine in the end. The markers keep falling off, but we fixed it by just putting loads of tape on. And finally, it was time for the test to begin. Now this is where things got interesting. Recording motion capture with a Vicon setup is all done in here, Shogun Live. It's honestly pretty easy to use and it gives you a live readout of everything that the cameras are seeing, including solved skeletons of your characters or your props. Now, this is not the creative part of the pipeline. You wouldn't be thinking about lighting or what the final character model is when you're using Shogun Live. But to Howley, it was already giving him a load of information to go off. So if you look at this pirouette here first, there's a fault here. The level of detail on that is absolutely perfect because that's what we call slipping the heel. She's actually popping the heel off the floor and slipping into parallel. Mm. So any teacher would be like, they may have missed, they could very well have missed that. And actually then, if you watch that on playback, you go, that child or that student is actually slipping their heel. That is something I need to sort out right now. And it didn't end there. The fuerte was a little bit, could be better if I was nitpicking. Can you just go back a touch? Is that right, just the beginning of that pirouette? I mean, that is absolutely exactly as I asked for. No, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. It was interesting to see what he really meant about the difference between this and what you get from watching phone footage. I can see that she goes through her foot better, but what I can't see here is how much turnout she's using, which I can see on that perfectly. This one, I have no ch <laughs> I have very little chance other than a visual stimulation about her thumping her leg. But now, this wicked thing there, you can almost see the spine of the body. You can see her spine leaning in. You would never get ever get anything like that as a dance teacher, nothing. No matter how much I studied a dancer. And before long, Howley went from thinking about dance teaching to protecting dancers. I think that maybe as well, this isn't just about better mechanics. This is about creating safer dance practice yeah. as well. Yeah, injury prevention. Yeah, like ACLs didn't exist 40 years ago. And now they do because dancers are taking their body to further limits. 
Now, I think we all want the dancers' bodies to go to further limits. There's no dance teacher in the world that wouldn't want to push their student to their best. Yeah. But are they doing it safely? With the bad test out of the way, it was time for Tilly to flex her dance skills and see if she could escape the all-seeing powers that we were about to give to Howley. But we wanted to go a little further than just crowding around a computer screen. We wanted to give them full physical control of the recording. And that is where VCam comes in. <laughs> VCam is a tool that lets you connect your phone to a scene in Unreal Engine. So after we got Tilly's good take, we took that capture, connected it to Unreal, and put the virtual camera right in her hands so that her and Howley could walk around her performance in 3D and review it from every angle. I mean, I didn't realise it did this, Howie. Honestly, that was a bad idea. He got brutal with it, quick. That is just awful. <laughs> Look at her, look at her chin. Complete loss of turnout. So look at her head position, how bad her head's lifted up. Because she's arching her spine. That's quite an interesting angle. Sorry, Tilly. God, you can break everything. What else have we got? <laughs> <laughs> But it did mean a whole lot of bang for Howley's book as a dance teacher. Nothing escaped him, and it gave Tilly something completely immersive and personalised to learn from. And that is what I would be showing. Immediately that, you're talking about diagnostic like you can't believe. Yeah. But then you could take 20 seconds of choreo and literally build an hour and a half class around that. You have so much evidence, which you don't get in dance. You don't get that from your phone. And, and, and remember, most people that I'm teaching are nowhere near Tilly's ability. Tilly was absolutely the right person to use for this, but the interesting people to use will eventually be the, the more novice dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be that will be where it's at. So I think that went all right. Yeah. That was amazing. Your suit slow mo on your phone is a great thing to have because people then understand how they got there. But this is like next level <laughs> it's and it's, it's pretty brutal like you can you can really deconstruct everything that you see it's not just about getting technically better it's also about health and self-preservation and making sure that you can do this for longer because you aren't hyperextending you aren't moving in the wrong way or landing yeah. heavily that is exactly it i mean literally from my perspective it's it makes it safer this just on a mechanical side has a, a means in which to increase better coordination which is great but then you're then talking about then starting to move into the slightly more holistic side right now. So we're actually yeah. talking about here going, she understood her body better by watching that afterwards yeah. and seeing where things had unraveled a bit to then when she'd accomplished it right. She, it, it's so visual. These kids grow up now using videos as a way to get better. They All of them go on YouTube and things like this to learn things. So why can't we increase that education? Because they'll be it's safer dance practice. They'll be healthier. So that means that they're healthier, they're happier. They're more confident. There's there's no lose to that at all, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Where is it? We're pretty new to motion capture, but we were able to take some other complete newcomers to motion capture and put them in our volume and give them an experience that they've never had before. It was a really fun research project and pretty exciting to think that it might actually have some knock-ons within the dance industry. And now I'm just left with the feeling that we need to do more. We've got to do stuff that people have never tried before in motion capture. My mum's got a dog. We could put that in the motion capture suit. We could figure that out. We've got to take a broom handle, make people feel like it's a bow staff from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We've got to do workshops. We've got to help people understand. We've got to get people jobs in motion capture. This isn't just a room. It's Goblin Academy. We need to be thinking about all sorts of stuff that we can do. We <laughs> you see that? That was amazing. And anything could happen and dreams can come true. We need to make more goblins. We need to make more goblins. We need to make more goblins. We need Hold on, Owen. Before we do any of that, why don't we just start with a vlog about Markovus? Yeah! Hello. That was so much fun, wasn't it? Um, listen, Vicon are making a part of their website just for indie creators like me and maybe you. So if you want to get into motion capture, you want to learn more about the technology, you want to find out what steps stand in the way between you and your motion capture project coming to life, get over to this website uh, and you can embark on your motion capture journey. Okay, see you on the next one. Bye!